the winter of a divorce, the winter of a death in the family, the winter of a tragedy, some things we can't understand. But here's what we do know. It's possible for us to get through the winter. Here's what's exciting about the passing of time. It takes you through whatever you're experiencing at the moment. That's what time will do, take you through the winter. Now, how do you handle the winters? Make this little note. You can get better and you can get stronger and you can get wiser. There's no winter that you can't overcome. There's no winter that you can't figure out how to survive. Of figuring out a way to get through it. Hang on, make this note. Winters don't last forever. Yes, the tyranny of communism lasted for 75 years, but finally that long winter was passed. So become wiser, become stronger, become better to handle the winters that are gonna come in your life. With self-esteem bursting out all over, with the skills you're gonna develop, you're gonna be able to handle whatever comes your way. I promise you that. Sometimes the winter seems long. The night seems like it'll never pass, but sure enough, eventually, the night has to give way to the day. Winter has to give way to the spring. The difficult time has to give way to opportunity. The recession has to give way, finally, to the progression, to the expansion. The long night has passed and opportunity is here. Spring always comes. Just hang in there when the night is long. Hang in there when it's dark. Hang in there when you can't figure it out. And your spring will surely come. From my teacher, Mr. Show, who said to me, we don't have to change what's going on out there. That's the wind that's blowing. All we have to do is change what's going on in here. And now there's several ways to do that on personal development. Here's the first one. We must learn from personal experience. Pretty simple. Learn from what happens to you. Take a look back over the last few months. Did you make some mistakes? How could you correct those for the future? Take a look back over the last year. Have you done it right or done it wrong? Let's correct it for the next year. Learn from your personal experience. Mr. Shope asked me when I first met him, he said, Mr. Owen, how are you doing? You've been out there now six years. And I said, I'm not doing very well. He said, I suggest you not do that anymore. What a simple, swift analysis to my situation. He said, if you keep doing it, the next six years will be like the last six. You don't want that to happen. Let's make the changes. So learn from your personal experience. Now here's number two, why I came to share this video experience with you today. And that I call it OPE, other people's experiences. That's me, other people. That's your teacher, other people. That's your friends and colleagues, other people. The people you meet that can pass along to you their experiences, what's happened to them, the mistakes they made, how they corrected them, how they changed their health and changed their bank account and changed their income and changed their future. That's it, other people. Here's a good phrase to note. Negative is normal. It's not successful, but it's normal. It's part of life. And here's the next key, in my opinion. You must learn to handle the negative. Don't ignore it, handle it. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to dwell on it, but you do have to handle it, my opinion. I know some people teach, just turn your head real quick and say, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. They'll take your guard. So you've got to handle the negative. Here's what part of it is. It's called the great war between good and evil. The minute you were born, you got involved in the war between good and evil, between darkness and light between negative and positive, between evil and good, between tyranny and democracy, between weeds and human activity. I mean, the war is on. In the absence of light, guess what's automatic? Darkness. If good does not arouse itself and become active, guess what moves in? Evil. It's a war. A mental war, a physical war, a financial war, between enterprise and ease, between accomplishment and failure. It's a war. One of the words that destroys everything is called neglect. Neglect. 
And I found this out. A week of neglect could cost you a year of repair. It isn't worth it. If the future gets clear, the price gets easy. Because you got to remember, for every promise, there's a price to pay. Everybody's got to pay the price. Everybody's got to do the deal. Everybody's got to do the discipline. Everybody has to pay. But here's what I've discovered. If the promise is clear and powerful, the price is easy to pay. The price is some classes. The price is a few books. The price is a few disciplines. The price is finding something that'll make your life better, make you grow, make you change, make you develop. So the first part of the key is to design the promise. Then what is the price to pay? I'm telling you, the price will be easy. Anybody in my audience can pay. No matter where you are, where you come from. Color doesn't matter, religion doesn't matter, where you grew up doesn't matter, circumstances don't matter. I'm telling you, if you'll make the promise of the future clear for yourself. The things you want, the places you want to go, the things you want to have, the person you want to become, the skills you want, the homes you want, the future you want, the friends you want, all of the values of life that you could possibly want. If you'll make that clear, make those lists, and be serious about it, I promise you it's an easy price to pay. Anybody can pay it. And the best advice I can give you is, if I can do it, you can do it. Farm boy from Idaho, raised in obscurity, I changed my life, turned it upside down, turned it all around, found economics, found future, found promise, and if I can do it, you can do it. If you will change, everything will change for you. You'll never be the same. You'll keep growing. As you look back on a few months, look back on a few years, you won't believe the progress you can make economically, your relationship with your family, your friends, and whether you're in sports or economics or whatever, I'm telling you, that whole process of committing yourself for personal change, personal value, can really make your life unique and worthwhile. A person who has purpose in their life, they have something to go for, some meaning. One writer described it, for some people it becomes a magnificent obsession. And for you and I, maybe it doesn't need to be that dramatic as a magnificent obsession, but it has to be something that does something to us, something that pulls us, especially into the future. You know, there are many influences on us. One is the influence of the past. Some people are always pulled back, back, back by the past. Some people are always pulled aside by the distractions, the distractions. But here's what's powerful. If you have a list of high purpose in your life, it pulls you toward the future. And the more powerful the purpose is, the stronger it pulls. And here's the other great advantage if you have purpose for the future. It pulls you through all kinds of challenges and all kinds of difficulties. If you don't have these strong purposes for the future, it's easy to get swallowed by a bad day. It's easy to be almost annihilated by a poor month. And it's easy sometimes to almost disappear beneath the waves of a a year that goes backwards if you don't have something to pull you beyond that year. So if you want something to pull you through all kinds of challenges, all kinds of difficulties and things that come at you, you got to have something on out there beyond today, beyond next week, beyond next month, beyond this year that pulls you into the future. And the clearer it is, the stronger it pulls. The more dynamic it is, the more it affects your life, your spirit, your heart, your soul. It also creates imagination. It gets your mind working on how to achieve that purpose. And if your mind will work, and if your heart works, and if your spirit works, and if you have good input, like good ideas, I'm telling you, there isn't anything you can't accomplish. If you're willing to be the best in your field, if you're willing to demand of yourself excellence in skills, to be the best that you can possibly be. In the training, do the best you possibly can. In doing a workshop, do the best you possibly can. Developing the skills of using your personality, developing the skills of language, developing the skills of influence, developing the skills of organizing. If you're willing to be an expert in all of the skills and not only make a handsome living, not only make a lot of money, but if you would so desire and if it would be your purpose, a chance to make your fortune. 
Here's why we don't really reach into the future. We're trapped either by regret of the past or the routine of the present. So busy with the routine of the present, we don't give much thought to designing the future. Or trapped by the past with regrets of past losses and past failures and past mistakes. And we relive it over and over again, not to the benefit of changing it for the future, but just because, you know, we feel that our lives have been less than favorable simply because of all the things that's happened to us in the past. But here's the real key is to spend some time. And usually we don't do it until someone comes by and offers the suggestion. That's why meeting the right person at the right time, attending the right class, listening to the right sermon, having a conversation with the right person sometimes can totally change the direction of your life. And you're never the same after that personal contact or sitting in that class or reading that book or coming face to face with someone who says, Hey, you know, our lives are not that good. What could we do to change? And that very conversation starts this whole process. Wow. I'm arrived, arrived at a fairly poor place. How could I change all of that for the future? And that is all possible. Here's the next key. Make sure that the greatest pull on you is the pull of the future. Not the pull of the past that keeps taking you back. Not the pull of gravity like the present that just keeps you sort of stuck where you are. But we want to make sure that the greatest influence and pull on us is the pull of the future. If you have powerful goals, well designed and plenty of them to stir your imagination, here's what they will do. Goals become like a magnet. And the bigger they are and the stronger they are and the longer the list and the more things you'd like to acquire during the course of your lifetime, the stronger they pull. And here's the other advantage in setting goals so that these goals begin to pull you in that forward future direction. They pull you through all kinds of downtime, all kinds of nighttime experiences, all kinds of winters. You can much more easily survive the next crisis, the next winter of your life. If you have well set goals, finely tuned places you want to go, things you want to do, people you want to meet, skills you want to develop, fortune you want to make, benevolence you want to engage in. If all of that becomes powerful and clear and you're on your way, I promise you, no matter what happens, those goals will pull you through. You won't be lost in the middle because you'll be able to see beyond. Where does self-confidence come from? And this is the best advice I can give you on that. Not neglecting, first of all, the small daily disciplines. Self-confidence really comes from feeling good about yourself. And one of the best ways to feel good about yourself is at the end of the day to know that you poured it on. You did your best. If you conducted a meeting, you did the best you could. If you made a phone call, it was the best phone call you could possibly make. If you wrote a letter, it wasn't a casual letter. It was your best letter. At the end of those kind of days, when you feel good about yourself, self-confidence starts to rise. You know that if you can have this kind of a good day, you can have another one the next day. And those days become the weeks, the weeks become the months and the month becomes a powerful year. Self-confidence comes from the lack of neglect. If you will not neglect to do the small daily disciplines, that's where self-confidence comes from. Part of good health is self-confidence. I know I'm going to be healthy. I eat the apple a day. I walk around the block. I do the jogging on the beach. At the end of the day, when you've really poured it on and you've done all the stuff, self-confidence grows. That self-confidence affects your health, it affects your future, it affects your psyche. So this is true. One of the great powers is self-confidence. Self-confidence means willingness to do whatever it takes to achieve. Some people say, well, I'll do it for a little while and see what happens. You know, I'll try a couple of things. If that doesn't work, I'm out of here. And all of us know that that kind of person doesn't have much of a future. But if you're willing to do whatever 
it takes. If I have to learn a couple of things, I will learn those things. If I got to learn five or six things, I'll learn all six. If I have to take an extra class, I'll take an extra class. If I've got to read the books, I'll read the books. If I have to consult with people who know more than I know, I will do the necessary consulting. Whatever it takes, I will do. That starts to develop unbelievable self-confidence. Self-confidence also comes from the ability to rise above your circumstances. To rise above what happens, the petty little things, the discouraging things that would sink everyone else's ship except yours. That would cause someone else to quit early in the day, but you keep going. That kind of willingness to overcome all circumstances, whether it's the little challenges or the big challenges, if you're willing to do that, I promise you, this kind of power will work for you, and in you, the variable, it'll make a difference. Now, there's two kinds of people to learn from. One is failures. It's too bad failures don't give seminars, right? That would be valuable. Bring your notebook, have them tell you how they lost it all and threw it all away, threw their health away and threw their friendships away and things didn't work out well. That would be valuable. But now then we must also learn from positive people that have done well. They've got the health and so we ask them, how did you become so healthy? They've got the skills, so we ask them, how did you become this skillful? They've got the income, so we ask them, how did you get here in such a short period of time? So now here's what's important in personal development. In learning from other people, we learn number one, by observation. We learn what we see, we watch people that are successful in what they do. In sports, we watch their disciplines. In business, we watch their disciplines by observation, what we can see. The reason I created this video is something that you could see someone's experiences translated for you. Second, we learn by what we hear. I've got some of my uh, lectures on cassette tape, so you know, you can take them with you wherever you go and learn by listening. Turn your car into a mobile classroom and listen. And then listen to the sermon on Sunday morning. Listen to the lectures. Listen to the teacher. Listen to someone who's got something good to say. And then number three is vitally important on personal development, and that is read all the books, all the books you can possibly read in your lifetime. Mr. Shof got me started on my library. I've got one of the better libraries. Haven't read everything in it, but I feel smarter just walking in it, my library. At least I was smart enough to buy it. Now I got to be smart enough to read it. Then, of course, I got to be smart enough to decide what's valuable and then do it. But this one is very important. Become a good reader. Some books that helped change my life. Mr. Shof recommended, of course, the Bible. And my parents made sure I was a pretty good scholar by the time I was 18. That's been so beneficial for me, drawing from those illustrations, uh, reading about those stories, people who made it and people who didn't make it and what the difference was. And then other books that helped to really change my life. One called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And then a book that helped me become financially independent by the time I was 31. And that book is called The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. But I started reading the books, attending the classes, uh, making sure that I got in front of people that had something good to say. And then I started keeping a journal. One of the major things my teacher taught me was to keep a journal. He said, don't trust your memory. If you hear something good, just make a little note and write it down. Now, at first I took, you know, notes on pieces of paper and torn off corners and backs of old envelopes. And it didn't serve me well, you know, thrown in a drawer. Then I learned to keep a journal, a bound copy of all my notes. So I would suggest you do the same. Things that impress you, a poem that impresses you. Uh, when you attend a class, some of the ideas that impressed you, jot them down. Uh, you read something in a magazine, right? Some ideas, take those out, put them in your journal. Keep a good journal the rest of your life. This will serve you well. My journals make up a significant portion of my own library. And if you saw my library and saw my journals, I'd tell you what you'd have to say. This is the library and these are the journals of a very serious student. No wonder Mr. Rohn is invited to lecture and speak on his experiences around the world. So I want the same thing to happen to you. Value captured that you can resort to later, go back over it and review it and let it become valuable to you.
Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Develop the skills, learn the lessons, take the classes, uh, absorb all that is being taught to you these days. And then later on, of course, you can sort it out, what's valuable to you and how to refine it for your business and for your life and for your future. But the main thing is to get it and start this process of personal change, personal development. And let me say it one more time, if you will change, everything will change for you. You'll never be the same. You'll keep growing. As you look back on a few months, look back on a few years, you won't believe the progress you can make economically, your relationship with your family, your friends, and whether you're in sports or economics or whatever, I'm telling you, that whole process of committing yourself for personal change, personal value, can really make your life unique and worthwhile.